Hello, hello, and welcome to our webinar on finding the happiness in your life that you have worked so hard to achieve. I'm delighted that you have joined me here, and I'd love you to tell me where you're calling in from today, if you would like to put it into the comments where you're, coming, where you're calling in from today. I'm delighted to have you. I'm starting off this webinar with an attitude of extreme gratitude. Last week, some of you will know that I was in hospital for heart stents. And the feeling of gratitude I have that my medical condi condition was manageable with heart stents is absolutely phenomenal. Gratitude is one thing that for me is a superpower and it's important for me to let everybody know how grateful I feel. So I'd love you to let me know, is there anything that you're grateful for, for today? And um, again, comments in the chat will be, will be brilliant. Anything that you're grateful for. I see we have a, we have a, a person from Boston, Brian, hi Brian, good to, good to see you here. And we have somebody from India. I think this is the first time we've had somebody from India. So welcome. I hope I pronounced your name, Sandara. Let me know if I'm, if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. And uh, I see uh, Brian is grateful for his family. Absolutely, Brian. And that's some what's something that uh, I I will hope to talk about today. So just a, a few ground rules for today's meeting. This is a, I, I welcome interruptions if anybody wants to interrupt at any stage, if anybody has questions to ask, don't wait to go in the comments, unmute yourself, interrupt me, and I will be delighted to, I will be, I will be delighted to have a conversation with you. So anything that, that is, discussed in this meeting will stay in this meeting. Uh, towards the end of the meeting, I will be offering a, uh, a few free gifts to anybody who stays to the end of the meeting. So I'd love to, I'd love to have you benefit from one, one, of, my, one of my free gifts this morning. Um, will be uh, a stay till the end, not to be missed free gifts. And if anybody would like to contact me, I will put my the link to my calendar. You can make a you can make a you can make an appointment to have a conversation with me if anybody wants to contact me at any stage. So let's get started. I'm sharing the wrong thing there. So, so apologies. Okay, so some food for thought to get started with. If you are a successful person, if you consider yourself successful, but you're struggling to achieve that success, or you're uh, struggling to enjoy that success, you've worked hard to achieve what you've achieved, but there's something missing. There is, you feel, that you can't enjoy life. You've worked hard for the success, so why aren't you enjoying it? How important is it for you to enjoy that success and what's stopping you from enjoying it? What are you waiting for in order to enjoy that success? Anybody who would like to put into the comments any, any thoughts that they have on that during the course of this presentation, I would love to hear it, so comment unmute yourself and let's have a conversation about it. So, about me, I have spent a, well, it's, it's actually closer to 30 years, but I say over 20 years because I don't like to think I'm that, I'm that old to have 
30 years experience, uh, over 20 years experience in the corporate world. I reached the top of my profession. I was a finance director for an engineering company. I always knew I would be happy when I reached that goal. I would have it all. And indeed from the outside, people looking in at me would have thought that yes, indeed, I had it all. I had the perfect family, a beautiful car, a fabulous house, and I was at the top of my profession. So what was missing? It took me a long time, of course, to realize that anything was missing. I was quite arrogantly, quite ignorantly working away, working 60, possibly 70 hours a week, devoting all of my time and all of my life to my career. All the while, there are beautiful things happening around me that I was missing out on. I was driven to achieve and success for me was defined by the material things. It was only when I lost my three-year-old daughter that I began to reevaluate my life, to re-examine my purpose and the meaning of everything I was doing. And it took me a while, but I realized I was focusing on things that I didn't value. I was focusing on the material things when my true value lay in family, in people, and in the loved ones that surrounded me. Indeed, I would go so far as to say that though I was providing the material things, I wasn't providing the thing that my family needed most, me. So when that family tragedy happened, it was a shock to the system. But I continued to work. I continued to bury myself in the things that weren't important. I continued to grow the weeds in my life. Life has a funny way of making us do the things we need to do. And indeed, when the pandemic happened, I got the opportunity to reevaluate my life again when redundancy in my career was offered. And indeed, redundancy what gave me the perfect opportunity, the opportunity I'd been, I had been waiting for. My life now, I, I possibly work just as hard as I ever did, but at times that allow me to decide where my focus is. It allows me to decide when I'm going to work and how I'm going to work. And it allows me to devote all of my attention on this, my son, Max. He is the light of my life. And my life now revolves around making the perfect life for him. If my life was full of setbacks, then yours doesn't have to be. And as my vision, my mission in life now is to help others avoid the pitfalls and setbacks that I experienced. If that is familiar to you, I'd love to hear your story. I'd love to hear more about it. So, the topic of today's conversation, what you need in order to enjoy your success. And for me, these three, these three things are so important. Resilience to criticism. There are always people willing and able to criticize us, but is it criticism or is it feedback? Being resilient to criticism and accepting of feedback is so important and it allows us to become untouchable, unaffectable by neg negative people. The ability to bounce back from setbacks, it is often said, and I'm sure you've heard it before, it is not what happens to us in life that's important, but how we respond. And yes, uh, the ability to bounce back is so important 
to being able to enjoy the success we have made. To me, one of the most important things in any aspect of life, whether it's work or family, is bringing compassion and humanity to our relationships, to who we are, to how we operate in the world, to how we show up in the world. And I have a formula for this. The formula, and some of you may have come across it before, is braving. So what does that mean? Let's get into it. So B is boundaries. If we don't set, maintain and communicate, communicate our boundaries, how do we expect others to respect them? Do we respect the boundaries set and communicated by others to us? Setting boundaries, communicating them and respecting them is something that is so important in building relationships, in building the respect of others, and in learning to let go of those things that we do not control or cannot control. The next part of the formula is be reliable. Do what you say you'll do. Don't make promises that you know you cannot keep. And this is something that I was affected by repeatedly during my career. People promising me, if I do this, if I perform to a certain standard, I will get a promotion. People are regularly making promises that it's not within their power to, to keep that promise, or they know that they have no intention of keeping it. This is the quickest way to lose trust and friendships. And being reliable is so important to how we bring compassion and understanding to the world. Closely related to that is be accountable. Accept responsibility for the things that are yours to be res responsible for. Don't be accountable for those things about which you have no control and where the responsibility belongs elsewhere. Accountability, again, is so important in building trust and in building friendships. Next is the vault. Do you know people who are happy to share the story that somebody else has shared with them, but that is not theirs to share. This is also known as gossiping. If somebody shares something with you, if, something, if somebody shares a confidence with you, respect that confidence. It is not yours to share, and sharing that will lose you friendships, lose you trust, and lose you the respect of the people who you love. Integrity. This is very closely linked to everything I have said before. Being honest, being authentic, being true to yourself is so important in building friendships, in building relationships, and in gaining the trust of others. If you find it let go, if you find it difficult to let go, to delegate, to delegate, then perhaps it is because the people who you need to delegate to lack integrity, or indeed, perhaps we lack integrity ourselves. Next, non-judgmental. And this is so important. One of the things we need to let go of control, one of the things we need to let go of, one of the things we need to, to do in order to delegate is to trust that the person to whom we're delegating 
can do the job and will do the job and to let go of our judgments about that person. Are our opinions unfair judgments of people? If you can learn to delegate non-judgmentally, if you can learn to respect people without judgment, then you are more willing to delegate free of time in your own calendar and to have more time to enjoy the life that you have built. And we've touched on this already, gratitude. Gratitude for the small things is so important in helping us deal with the big things. Truly feeling gratitude, truly being grateful for the things that we have to be grateful for, whether they are big or small, moves us a massive way along the path of happiness, of enjoying the life that we have built, of being grateful for the life that we have built. So seven aspects to the formula for enjoying the life that you have worked hard to create. Sounds simple, doesn't it? But I know it's not simple at all. All of these things are difficult to achieve, but well worth achieving. And I'd love to talk to you, to you about how you manage to keep those things in your life or in your future endeavors. Um, I'm now going to invite um, Claudia, a previous client of mine, to tell us how some of these things and indeed how our working relationship has helped her gain better control of her working life. Uh, Claudia is a, I think it's fair to say she's a health coach, she's a, a nutritional coach, has run several businesses over a number of years that have been successful. Uh, Claudia has always been a high, a high achiever and Claudia, if I can ask you to un unmute yourself and tell us about your life in building your career and uh, as a highly driven, successful person, tell us, tell us about that life. Yes, uh, well, here I am. Uh, thank you, William, for asking me. I'm glad to be of value if I can here. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still in the learning process with those uh, with that formula <laughs> I, I wrote it down and um, for me boundaries is really difficult uh, especially to keep my own boundaries um, it's always a balance lately between being focused on what I want to get done on a daily basis and about self-care and uh, my husband uh, and I are uh, uh, married for 30 years so he's used that I'm always busy <laughs> but, uh, but my body is telling me when I uh, I have to take a break so that's where um, yeah there's there's some learning to do there uh, still like you I enjoy what I do so I'm passionate so it doesn't feel like working but um, uh, last year yeah so the year before uh, my blood pressure was so high that the doctor doubled my medicine and uh, it was all lifestyle, lifestyle related. So with my nutrition, I did great. I lost uh, 40 pounds. So I expected that my blood pressure would go down automatically. But uh, my lifestyle working uh, three weekends in a row and in the evenings, no, that my body said, no, this is, this is your boundary. <laughs> Learn from it. So, uh, yeah, so now I'm back uh, to that. And uh, yeah, I worked with you last, last year. Um, I'm a perfectionist as well. So um, I do uh, a lot. It's of, fair to and, say, Claudia, I, that, that you were uh, one of my, my clients who was more open to uh, 
to trying different things. And one of the things we did in our relationship was hypnotherapy and yes. around uh, hypnotherapy, therapy, particularly around your perfectionism. You might uh, yes. tell, tell our guests how, how that was for you and how, what, what effect that had for you. Yes, well, there, I've been struggling for years with it. Uh, and I thought I, I was less perfectionist, but uh, I still am. It's, it's still, uh, it's, it's there. It's, it's a habit that's, that you integrated in your, in your system somehow. And um, um, I always have such a high standards and possibly people that are here and that are high performers uh, will recognize that. So um, I asked you to, to help me if possible. And uh, you coached me in this and uh, we did a hypnothera hypnotherapy session. I never had such an, uh, such an experience before. But uh, we finally figured out in one session where it came from, that, that feeling that I'm not good enough. And had you any concerns about hypnotherapy before you, before you began the session? Uh, no, I've been interested in personal development for 25 years. I've read a lot of books. I've done a lot of training. And I believe that the... Um, the, that the real issues in our life are in our subconscious. So the way I see it is that hypnotherapy can be a way to, uh, to get some healing there because we don't know how we experienced emotions in the past, especially as a child. Uh, and it's, it's, um, it's down the surface, so we cannot access it with our mind. And... You said you, you know, the hypnotherapy very quickly got to the root of why you were a perfectionist. Um, you had worked for a long time in trying to find that root. So what, what was different about the hypnotherapy? Yeah, different about it was that I suddenly got an understanding of, uh, of events in the past that... Um, so several events that gave me the same feeling and uh, after the hypnotherapy session you gave me uh, an audio to listen to which I did and I uh, yeah I felt a totally different person <laughs> I really I really believe uh, yeah we said it as um, as a nickname uh, to the other uh, entrepreneurs that you are some kind of magician but you, for me you really are because 25 years of reading books didn't bring me to this level of awareness of um, of who I am and how I can better deal with that yeah with, with finding that balance in my life and tell me more about that balance what does it look like now um I'm getting there. It's uh, so I'm not only focused again, uh, anymore on just doing my business. So instead of working hard, I'm trying to work smart. So since there's uh, the issue is if there's a lot of time, you you tend to spend all the time that you have in performing and getting things done. But now I also put myself on my calendar and also uh, I even started a, a guitar lesson last year, uh, last week. So every week I make time for playing my guitar because otherwise it's in the future. And um, if, if you think I will do that when I'm hey, whatever, what, what, what first you have to achieve. No, you have to enjoy life right now. You have to enjoy um, building a business or having a career uh, relationships fun and you and you yeah you should be able to focus on several aspects in your life to really feel successful it's not just it's not just a career or the financial success also and for I, me. I think at the same time as you learning the guitar your husband is learning the bass guitar so yeah he's you get to do yeah, yeah yes so uh, we can uh, do music together. So we already windsurf together. So now there's another thing that uh, connects us. So love that. 
And how is your business going since you decided to enjoy more of your life? Um, I'm I'm getting a structure. I'm building up systems, so there's there's progress every week. Yeah. So the the success in life doesn't have to be, have to be at the expense of your work life and of your business life. No, you just sometimes have to be more patient and uh, uh, don't. Yeah, you you cannot force business growth, so it takes time. So my other business took three years to build uh, successfully as well. So uh, it's just about learning to set achievable standards. And oftentimes I planned too many projects in a week, uh, getting stressed about it, sleeping bad. Uh, and then you come in, in, a, in a vicious circle that, uh, that yeah, makes you feel bad about yourself and you're putting yourself down. And that's not helpful. So it's more about, um, but it's difficult, you know, if, if you work at home, like I do, and especially I run two businesses, uh, you really have to uh, to see that you limit your time that you're working and you you move in between and uh, and and take breaks. I I think before we start working together, Claudia, you, um, you had some issues with procrastination and that was related to your perfectionism that the only way to do something was perfectly. And you since we framed that, that to take imperfect action. So as well as dealing with your perfectionism, you've also dealt with procrastination. Oh, that's, that's totally different now. I, uh, I take imperfect action. And instead of um, doing it like I see it in the future, that it's perfect, I, I do the smaller step, so to say. And that, I know, must, that, that must be that must be positively impacting your your business does. Yeah. Yes, it is. But I know a lot of a lot of mar, uh, from marketing. So I have uh, an ideal goal of uh, how to scale my business. So I'm already seven steps ahead where how I want to build my systems. But uh, first we have to keep it simple and go from there. So Getting getting back to the question of hypnosis, I know a lot a lot of people, um, their understanding of hypnosis is based on what they've seen on the TV, and based on um, stage hypnosis. The reality, the actuality of hypnosis, was nothing like that for you. You might describe the the process a little bit. Yeah, it, it felt very safe. Uh, first of all, we had an intake uh, call, of course, that uh, I discussed with you my issues and you asked uh, really deep questions on that. And then uh, we booked a call for the hypnosis itself. Um, I had to close my eyes and uh, you gave me an instruction what, the, what to do with my eyes. And I felt my eye movements my eye movement happening. I never felt something like that, but you told me that that's a good sign. So I just uh, gave myself over to the process. And furthermore, it's just you guided me going back to um, to memories of the past and, and then um, finding those uh, three really important memories related to my perfectionism. So... Um, I, I got emotional about it. And of course, that's logical because it's something that is bothering me now. So there are emotions attached to those memories. Um, but now when I go back to those memories, they don't feel they don't feel that bad anymore. Is that is that a good yes, thing to absolutely. say? Yeah, because the um and I believe what, what I understand from other books I've read about it, it's that um, we attach the meaning to an event, but from the perspective of a child, for instance, or from the perspective of someone is hurting us, um, and maybe they didn't even intend to hurt us. 
but it's how we how we dealt with the reality at that time. And the only way to uh, to heal from that is to yeah is to find a way to uh, to get clarity on that emotion and to get that layer of emotions away from the memory, so to say. So it's now <laughs> is it six or eight months since you've done that hypnosis? Uh, I believe so. When, yes. When, when people are changing their lives when people are changing their thoughts and their attitudes, uh, one of the issues is that they very quickly relapse to the old way of thinking. So how are things now for you six or eight months down the road? Is it, have you relapsed to the old perfectionism or how, how is that now? Now I'm more aware of my behavior. And uh, like I said, my body is talking to me. So now I'm, I'm listening to, to my own, uh, my own, uh, yeah, my own signals, and um, yeah, also try to to plan my life better and uh, and to and to integrate more fun in it and not just achieving, because I will stay ambitious and I I will uh, I do believe that I will never retire and <laughs> will continue uh, for the rest of my life because I feel that this is my mission in life that I I that's what I'm here for to help women. Uh, lose weight and with my other business I help uh, families have great memories together with a holiday house for uh, that I rent and both uh, both businesses are built upon my passion and uh, about giving and about um, yeah giving the best I can to the of course you can't give from an empty cup so now you're you're focusing more time on yourself and more time on making sure you have something to give. Yes. But but also uh, enjoying the process. So I never focus on uh, the amount of time that I'm doing when, when I'm with clients. So my husband sometimes says, uh, well, I'm, uh, I'm tired now, let's go, you know? <laughs> I said, no. We have to make sure that everything is in order for our guests, you know, so I won't leave until uh, until we're done. But uh, yeah, there uh, it, it cannot be perfect either. You know, there's there's people with children and they're coming and uh, we clean the house. And sometimes we don't have time to clean up the garden and where all the toys are for the children. But then I say to him, that's less important for me. For me, it's important that it's a clean house and people won't bother. They, they know how the kids are at home. They, mm -hmm. <laughs> they will be uh, not that organized if there's a lot, a lot well, of things. To, they to, would... to need to have everything perfect is, is reduced. You focus on the, on the important things. Yeah, just uh, focus on the important things. That's, uh, and, and focus just on, uh, on what you can control. That's, that's also for me uh, one thing that I try to do. And how are the guitar lessons going? We just started uh, this week with a real first lesson. And yesterday I played my first song. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, yeah. A happy day. So. Yeah. Yeah, really fun. I'm wondering if uh, anybody else on the call would have any questions they'd like to hear. They'd, they'd have any questions for you. If you do, either un unmute yourself or put it in there. In the comments. So, anything else then, um, Claudia, that strikes you about how life has changed since we began to work together? Well, di directly after working with you, uh, so before that, I was pretty um, insecure. I may say in in my my second business, which is helping women with with menopause, I built my business in a other language than my uh, my native language. I'm Dutch originally. You probably heard, <laughs> but um, yeah, there. Um, I was always looking. No, yeah, let's say I was always expecting someone else to tell me what, what was right to do. And I didn't feel that secure. But after working with you, I had some discovery calls with potential clients. And I've, I just felt unstoppable. 
And my business coach at the time, she said, uh, it's amazing what uh, what a, a change there has been in you. And, and she has worked with me for several months. I worked, started working with her in January last year. So she knew me about six months uh, before I had that session with uh, William. So, uh, yeah, and, and she noticed it immediately. And, and so did I. And even my husband, <laughs> he said, <laughs> what happened to you? <laughs> I said, okay, yeah, I just feel it, it's going to happen. So it's so uh, such a wonderful feeling. Uh, and I believe that's what we need um, to attract what we want is to really have the confidence that what we are doing is making a difference and that um, you can only attract it by becoming the person that you want to be in the future. And you, you cannot come there if you're doubting yourself all the time. And, and the doubt is all from the past. Everything that's, if there was no judgment of people around us, uh, if there was no past behind us, we would be unstoppable, wouldn't we? And then, and then we could have it all. Well, I think, as you know, that's that's my my tagline, Claudia. You can't have it all, and I I really believe that. And I've seen it happening for so many people that formed a belief along the way that you can either be prosperous or you can be happy, but you can't be both. But of course, the truth is, you can. You can have it all, and um, it's my it's my goal in life to help people have it all, whatever that means for them. So, yes, having have, having it all is something I I truly believe in. Yes, and at the same time, I believe that having it all, you need you need to change something. So, if you keep on doing what you're doing and you're not having a coach like you then um, what will happen? Then probably you will get the same results. So there, ha you have to invest in yourself somehow to, to change your, your actions, your feelings, your thoughts, to, to get and a grip the, on the, what the you need. The scientists among us will remember, I think it was Einstein that said that if uh, you keep doing the same things and expect different results, isn't that the, isn't that the definition of insanity? So yes. uh, it's so <laughs> true, and I've seen it. Uh, I've seen it so often in my own life, and in the stories of others. Yes, I can just recommend people to to have a call with you and to see if if there's a connection on uh, what their issues are. If you could help them, you, I find you really you're really respectful. You're really kind. You really have uh, a generous heart, and and you. Yeah, you, you are so professional in what you do. So for me, it would be a no-brainer to, to have a call and, and see if, um, if this could be the path that people need to, to have it all in life. And thank you for that, uh, Claudia. And if anybody would like to have a call with me, I have put the link to my calendar on the chat. Uh, so I'd love you to make an appointment and we can have, we can have a no commitment conversation to see how we might work together. Um, so with that, Claudia, I might uh, look um, to move uh, to, to thank you for your contribution, to thank you for your time. And I'll just go to the, to the next phase of the webinar where I can tell you about the exciting gifts I have for you. Um, okay, thank you all. Let, let, let me know if it was helpful for you. Uh, give, give me a number from zero to 10 if it gave you some inspiration in your life. And uh, I wish you all the best. And uh, keep on high achieving, but uh, don't forget about yourself, I would say. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Claudia. And it's, it's good that the gratitude slides should come up at this stage because gratitude is so important in my life and allows me do the things I want to do. And here is my free gifts to you. If you would like these gifts, please comment me in the comments or 
respond to the email that I will send you after this, after this, um, after this webinar. So I have a I've prepared a booklet on personal personal effectiveness, which essentially is strategies and tactics of managing our time better, freeing up the time, freeing up our time to enable us to devote more time to the things that we love to do. Um, that booklet is available to anybody, and I think I think you all would in, enjoy it and find it useful. Um, I have a Prosperous Nirvana community. Uh, that community is, is available on the Prosperous Nirvana website, and as well as recordings of previous webinars, I have other, other trainings that you would find useful. I have samples of me working with coaching and hypnotherapy clients, and it's completely free. It's worth signing up to. I'm also given discounted lifetime membership to my successful on purpose monthly program. There are multiple trainings, strategies on how we might make changes in our life and how we might make those changes permanent. And again, that's a monthly program and it's updated regularly and monthly. And I'm also, as I said, offering a free 60 minute coaching assessment to help you find and deal with whatever is the big issue in your life at the moment. In that assessment, we might discuss if there is an opportunity for us to work together. If there is, fabulous. If there's not, fabulous. If I think somebody else can better help you than I can, that's fabulous too. So again, it's no commitment, it's no commitment, it's completely free and it might just change your life. So again, the link to my calendar is in the chat and I would love for you to make that appointment. Actually, I'd love for you to commit to making that appointment. Who's going to commit to having a 60 minute conversation with me? Hashtag me in the comments if you're prepared to make that commitment and I will contact you. So all that remains for me to do is to ask if there are any uh, questions, if anybody has anything else that they would like to ask, or if anybody has anything that they would like to discuss. If anybody would like to stay on the webinar, I'll leave the webinar open for about five minutes. If anybody is concerned about having a public conversation, I'll stop the recording. I'll leave the webinar on for five minutes. And if anybody would like to engage with me in that time, in that five minutes, I'd love to, I'd love to speak to you. But with could that- I ask, uh, Could I ask a question, William? Yes, of course, Claudia. Because uh, I've been struggling myself uh, in finding my purpose in life. And uh, I'm wondering if the, the people that, that gave some great feedback on my story, they loved it and they found it inspiring. And that's, that's so good to know. But I'm wondering, people that are here, are you struggling with finding your purpose or your balance? Or what, what would it be? Because that's, that would be interesting to know, I believe to see how you can uh, how you can add some value. To, Maybe for me, next for to next day. Uh, Claudia, um, a lot of people are struggling to find their purpose. Um, but to, to understand to understand that struggle completely, they need to understand what their purpose is and Lots of people are struggling with that before in the beginning that they don't know what their purpose is. They've drifted through life. They've done whatever other people have expected. And, and finding that purpose can be a job of work in itself. 
And I'm wondering if anybody else feels that they're, they have never really found their purpose and would like to find that purpose. Okay, so with that, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll draw a, a close to the meeting. I'll, I'll leave the meeting open for a few minutes in case anybody would like to would like to have a conversation about that or a conversation about anything that has arisen today. And thank you for your for your attendance.